Hey, Chad here at Turner's Warehouse, back with part three of our custom pen making series. And today we are going to make this little guy, the section. Now, if you didn't watch our videos for the past two weeks, you're gonna to wanna to check them out. We went over all the tooling in video one. In the second one, we made the cap and body as far as all the threads and the internals. And today we're doing the section. This is probably the most challenging part for most people. And the reason being is we have threads on the outside, threads on the inside, and then we have a variety of stepped drilling inside this little tiny part. Now what this part is for, since we're making a fountain pen, our fountain pen nib screws into it, and then this goes into the body. And that is your section that holds your fountain pen nib. So we're gonna make that today. Let's go over the tools we're gonna use. All right, so very similar to last time, we are gonna need our drill bits for the section. These were our cap and body, and now we're finally gonna use these four little guys here. I'll have all the sizes for you in just a moment. We're gonna use some collets and our collet chuck. We'll of course need a drill chuck for the tailstock and a live center. We're gonna use our niche system for the threads on the outside of the section, as well as the housing threads that go in for the fountain pen nib itself. And of course, we're gonna use the tenon cutter again. So I'm gonna go over that, how to set that up and how to use that. So let's get started. Okay, I wanted to give you a little visual here of what we're gonna be making. So this is a blown up version of this fountain pen housing. And you can see there's an outer lip, an inner lip, the main body, the threads, and then you can probably tell it steps down just a little bit right here. So that is four parts, one, two, three, through the threads and four. So that represents our four drill bits. Now I'm gonna be using a 932nd, a 5 16 a 21 64 and a 3 8 There are also letter bit equivalents that will work just fine. So if you don't have these sizes, but you have letter bits, look up the measurements of these and you can probably find a letter bit or a metric that's very close. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna first drill all the way through with our 932nd and that'll clear this first hole. So we're gonna kind of work in reverse. We're gonna clear this spot. Then we will go with our 5 16 the depth of the threads here. Then with our 21 64 we'll cut this outer lip. And then finally with the 3 8 we'll cut this little tiny lip here. Okay, so what we need to determine is how far we're gonna drill for each part of this uh, housing. So we're going to look at these real quickly. Now this first one is just going to be barely anything. Looks like it's about 1.25 millimeters. Now that is the largest. So I'm going to put 1.25 mil. The second one, which is our second largest drill bit, we are at 2.31. We'll call it 2.3. Our third one, we want to go from the front to the start of those threads, 13.15. And then our 932nd will be through the whole body. Some things that are important to note when you're making a section if you don't drill these little reliefs, what'll happen is your threads will stop too soon or too late, depending on if you do drill them or not. Now, if you drilled this all the way down and just made it one big cut, your nib housing would move in the section back and forth. So what we're doing is we're replicating this so that when this goes in, it's a nice snug fit and there's no movement of the housing side to side. So that'll make it really comfortable and easy to write with. Okay, we're ready to make our section, but before we do that, before we go to the lathe, let's set up the tenon cutter for what we're gonna need for this. We're gonna need an M10 tenon for this. So if you look at this, this is our tenon cutter. Uh, it comes with everything you see here, but not the drill bit. Nine millimeter, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So you can set up a range of nine to 15 for any of your pen making needs. You will need a six millimeter drill bit for your pilot hole. And to set this up, 
uh, we're going to slide our setup bushing on here and we're using the smaller part. So whenever you do any setup, you're always going to set up to the smaller part. I'm going to loosen the cutter here. And this cutter blade just free floats in there so you can see it comes right out. And what I want to do is I want to put this up to here and I want my carbide cutter blade to be perfectly flat against the setup bushing. But I don't want it to be tight that it's scraping. So I just want to hold it loose but snug. So I'm going to get it flat. It's a little tricky. And then I want to be able to spin that. But I don't want to see any gap or any air between there. So once I'm in a good spot, I'll kind of hold this blade with my finger. And I'll snug these down to just a starter snug. And I'll give this another spin. Looks good. I don't see any gaps or anything in there. And now I can snug them down a little more. And you do want these snug. You don't need to, you know, put all your He-Man strength into it. Just nice and snug so it doesn't move on you on the lathe. But that's the perfect setup. We're ready for an M10. So one thing I want to mention is the length of your section is very important. And the reason is you've drilled your cap to a certain depth to allow for your nib to go in there and not hit. And if you make your section too long, you'll actually push that nib further in and risk hitting it. So you need to know your measurements before you start. Now I've given you some, some to go by here. And if you want to keep going with that, that's great because it'll give you some overall starting points and then you can tweak it as time goes on. This section overall from the very tip to the very back is 30.39, so call it 30 millimeters. Now our threads are about 7.6 millimeters, which would leave our front section here 23 millimeters. So those are just some starting points. You can always adjust the section to your liking if you like it longer or shorter, but this is just to give you a starting point for this. Now, that is important because our cutoff of the blank that we're going to start at is obviously much too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this and I think we are about 30 millimeters. So I'm going to set this at 30 and I want to pick whichever end I think is going to look the coolest. That is a cool swirl there. And I'm going to mark this. Now, if you were matching grain of some sort, you might want to, uh, you know, look at your blank and align it that way. But I'm going to go ahead and put a mark on here. And what I'm going to do is end up cutting this off to that length. I like to mark it even though it's the small end. And that way I know. So this is my whole section length here. So this is the only material I have to work with, which is only 30 millimeters of material. But you can see that's about what we just measured. So it's kind of important that you do that. A lot of times, uh, in the beginning when I would do this, I would think, oh, I'll just make it a little longer because I've got this longer piece. But then that messes up everything I've done as far as measurements for inside the cap and for the threads and all that. So make sure you're starting with a size and you stick with that size through it so that all your measurements line up. I'm going to be using my collet chuck just like the first uh, two videos where we made the cap and body. You may want to get a variety of collets for this type of work. It makes it a lot easier. You can use other chucks, but this is probably the most precise way to do it. And what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to do a quick center drill and then I'm going to drill my six millimeter pilot hole all the way through. And that's for my tenon cutter. And the reason I'm doing that is I need to cut this off where I just measured. And I like to have a hole in the center when I cut it off because for me it's a little easier to cut through and not damage the inside. Preference, I guess. So let's grab a tool.
We're gonna make sure we're flat here. And actually, I'm pretty confident in this one being flat because I cut it on the miter saw. Let me just check it real quick. So my, my blank is pretty square here, about as square as I can get it anyway. So we're going to call it good. And what I'm going to do is do my center drill. I'm using a number two center drill. You can use whatever you've got. But if you don't have one, I would get a two or a three is a good start. And that's pretty much all you need for this kind of custom pen making. We're going to turn this on at a low speed. Low meaning like 700. We'll do a little quick center drill. Back that up. Now we'll do our six millimeter pilot. Even though we're going to be cutting this off, I'm going to drill all the way through with this. there okay there we go so now we're through and now we can separate this to what we need uh, you can use a parting tool I've got a easy wood diamond here and I'm gonna go ahead and use that and I'm just gonna part this off and try to keep it as square as I can I like this because it just gives me a little more control on more of a delicate part. But a saw, you could take it to the saw, you could take it off with a parting tool, whatever you want. And see that hole just gives me a little easier access to that. I can make sure I'm square as possible. Looks pretty good. Now if it wasn't square, my tool would be vibrating or making a thumping noise. So I know I'm pretty good there. All right, and now the fun part. Okay, so the process for doing the threading and the drilling, uh, you can really do it either direction. So what I'm gonna do is cut the tenon first and the outside threads, then I'm gonna flip it and do the inside drilling and inside threads. You could absolutely do it in reverse. I don't know that one is better than the other. Um, this is just how I've been doing it. So I'm gonna keep going that same direction. So I'm just gonna expose a little more material. And I don't need a lot, but I need enough to cut those eight millimeters of, and you can see this thing's pretty short. Let me test measure, make sure I didn't overdo it. Nope, so it's still 30. 30 mil, but it's pretty short. So I'm gonna leave out just about half. All right. And I don't need that. But I will bring this up. I've already set up my tenon cutter, so I'm ready to cut my threads. Now, I only want to cut, uh, what did we say, eight millimeters worth of threads. So on my tenon cutter, I can either mark on the blank or mark on the tenon cutter eight millimeters, or I can just kind of get a measurement on my tool and see where that is. So I'm going to do from the end here. Looks like eight millimeter from the cutting edge is just to the side of the screw there. So that gives me a visual and that'll actually work pretty well. I'll just have to keep it clear. So I'm gonna load this thing up. Actually, I wanna put some WD in it. Now, the pilot shaft is meant to come out. You can glue it in, but you're gonna see some benefits of why we don't glue it in uh, going forward here. So the pilot shaft of the tenon cutter is 
loose, you can glue it in, but I'll show you a couple of reasons why I like to leave it loose. Now, before you put this pilot shaft in, make sure you blow this out and maybe put in some WD-40. You want this free floating and loose uh, when it goes in. So I'm gonna line this up, get this on, and then I'm gonna get close with my tool, about a millimeter apart. And remember, I'm only going to the inside of that screw. You can obviously do a much better job marking and measuring if that's your style, uh, but I kind of like to just have a quick and easy reference and go for it. Now, I'm gonna crank this on. And we're on the low speed setting of this lathe, so we're gonna be about 900 here. And I'm just gonna hold this and do this. And this is why this tenon cutter is so nice is you can make a really good quality tenon really, really easily and not have to continually stop and measure like if you were doing it by hand. So that is about everywhere I wanna go there. Now, what's cool is I can back this off and that shaft is still in there. And I'm actually gonna leave this shaft in here while I do some other operations. First thing I'm gonna do is move my tool rest up and I'm going to cut a little relief at the back and the front of the tenon. I like just a tiny bit of relief on this, so I'm gonna use this really pointy diamond carbide cutter. And you wanna be real careful because you don't wanna take off any extra material. But I'm just gonna cut a little tiny relief at the back. Should be noticeable. And a same little one at the front. And the front will be my leading edge into my threads. And I just think it helps to make the thread uh, thread on a little smoother. But keep in mind by doing this, what we've done, we cut that little relief at the back, we've made a weak point. So this whole thing, as we're making this and as we're turning it in the next one, uh, we have that little tiny part where this meets into the body and it's like a millimeter thick. So if we torque on this at any point or if we're tapping this and we crank our die too hard, we can snap it right off. So this is kind of a delicate thing that you wanna do here. Uh, and by leaving the shaft in, it kind of gives us a little extra support. So that's why I like that it's loose here. So let me move that out of the way, get the dust off here. And I'm gonna bring my water up. You kind of saw this on the body. What I'm gonna do is do just a quick high grit. This is 800. I'm gonna do just a quick high grit pre-sand. And essentially I'm trying to polish that area where my threads are gonna be. So I do a little bit of polishing and sanding here and there. And one, I'll think, I think it helps the overall quality, but I also think it will help with the operation of the, the threads. So if you don't think this is necessary, you don't have to do it, but you can do whatever you want. You could also chamfer that with a file, if you like to use a file. But you're gonna notice just from this little bit of sanding when I stop this, the, the tenon will be very shiny. So we know it, it definitely polishes it and helps the shine, which I think will help our smoothness. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we're ready to thread this. So we wanna grab our niche system with our M10 die and put some threads on this. So for the section threads, I'm gonna use the niche system. I'm gonna take out the tap holder and I'm gonna put in the die holder. And I wanna get my die set where these guide screws and hold it in. So this is my M10 from last time. I left it a little dusty, which isn't great, but I don't have any debris on it now, so we should be okay. So I can slide this in. I want the writing to the outside. I want to slide it in and then use those guides to hold it in place. And they should be pretty even. So you can see they're sticking out about the same. If they are a little off, you can move them just a little. Okay, 
So now we have our niche system with our M10. Let's go back to the lathe. Okay, this is the most delicate part. Well, probably not the most delicate part. When we turn the section, it's probably the most delicate part, but uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of WD-40 on here and a little in my, my die. And you wanna be really careful with this because you can easily snap this off and it will happen. So don't be alarmed when you first do a couple of these. I would actually take some old blanks if you're gonna try this, I'd take some old blanks that you don't mind if you ruin them. And I would make some sections just like we're doing today. And that way you can practice this process. You can break a few before you get to a blank that you really wanna get finished because it goes with the rest of your, your pen. But we're gonna introduce this up here till it touches. And then we're gonna gently spin it forward. And you can see those curls coming out and I'm, I'm giving it slight pressure this way as I'm spinning. And I'm spinning both the lathe shaft and the tap, I'm sorry, the die, the tap system, I should say. And you can see all those curls, that's really good. And then I'm gonna back it up and those should kind of cut loose. And I'm gonna try to knock some of those out of the way. Now, the cool thing about the niche system, you can see when I spin the lathe here to clear these out, it's spinning the whole system. So even though the tap, I'm, keep saying tap today, even though the die is threaded on there, I can spin it and it's all freely spinning. And now that I'm ready to go back to work, I can re-engage it and I'm just continuing to cut those threads. I can back it up, do some clearing with my brush. And the reason I'm clearing is I want this to go up to the shoulder as close as possible without those threads getting in my way, which they will get in your way. All right, so we're right up to the end there. And when I get to the end, I want to stop. I don't want to go oh, just a little further because if I give it that little extra, it could be just enough to snap that off there because there is not much material holding that on. So now we're going to back it off. And you can see it just unthreading nicely. If you're concerned about those curls getting in your way, just knock them out of the way. But there's our threads starting to appear. And you can see I still have all this room here to unthread, so I got plenty of room to work my tool. And there I'm off. And I can slide that out of the way. And this just was a little extra support. Now, one thing that's cool, while I'm on the lathe, I can take my body from last time, which has the M10 threads in it, and I can see how our threads look and if we have any issues. Generally, the only issue you might have, which we kind of have here, is I didn't cut enough of a relief there at the top. So my threads are actually lifted at the end there. So what I want to do is take my tool, my diamond again, and I want to just work on that relief just a tiny, tiny bit. And I don't want to hit the shoulder, just the, just the back end here. And there we go. So you saw how snug that was. The reason is we were kind of ramping up, the threads were ramping into the body. Make sure this body's clean. And now we can test fit. And it feels pretty good. Eh, a little snug, but it goes all the way to the end there. So we can flip the die and go over the threads again if we want to try to get all the way up to that shoulder, which is probably a good idea. And then we will be in good shape. And that is part one of the section. So I'm gonna flip this. And the reason you flip a die is there's, the threads are ramped more on one side than the other. So this will allow it to line up to the shoulder a little easier. So I'm just gonna slide it out, flip it over. And we wanna be real careful to get our threads started in the same spot. So. Feels pretty good. And you can see I'm not even holding that, just the weight of the tool. Oh, there we go. And we won't cut much till the very end, but there we go. Got nice and flat. And we can unscrew that. 
and we should be in real good shape. And our threads look good. They're a little dirty. But we can now test fit this again. And it goes up to that shoulder nice and easy. So we know we are in good shape for that and we can proceed to the next step. Now that we've done our M10 threads on the outside of the section, we're gonna go ahead and flip this around and we're gonna work on the inside of the section, the most fun part. I don't need the pin obviously. And I can put this in quite a lot because I'm not gonna be accessing the outside at all. So whatever works for holding, obviously the more material in the chuck is probably better. I don't have any science to back that up, but it's more theoretical than science-based information. All right, good and snug. Now, remember, we are gonna need our drill chuck. I'm gonna put this away. We're gonna still want this guy. We will grab our drill chuck and our four bits. So make sure you work from smallest to largest, although I guess you could work large to small. I've never done it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go the way I've always done it, smallest to largest. We're gonna drill through, then we're gonna drill our first depth, second depth, third depth. <clears throat> One thing I didn't mention is you may at some point make yourself a shop nib. And what I mean by that is, this is a nib that I really ruined by smashing a cap into it, and then I tried to flatten it out and it just didn't work. So this is what I use whenever I'm making a pen to test everything. And that way, if I do have a little shortness or I need to make adjustments, I'm not gonna ruin a new nib. So this one kind of has been floating around my shop for a couple years, and it's what I test everything with for these. So let's load up our first drill bit. Again, this is a 932nd. And I'm using shorty bits. You certainly don't have to. You can use whatever size you have. I use these on my metal lathe for other stuff, so that's why I have these shorties, but do whatever you got. Whoop, always unlock your machine. And we can give it just a little squirt. Remember, we have a six millimeter pilot hole, so it's not like it's going to be um, taking out all the material. It's really just taken off a skim, as you can see. So that six millimeter is not much smaller than this 932nd. I think I made it all the way through. If I'm not sure, I can measure this to make sure it's 30 millimeters. Yeah, it certainly is. So as long as I cleared that, I should be in good shape. because this is our through hole. Whoop. Yeah, we're clear. We are all the way through. Okay. Next bit is our doo -doo 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 -doo. 5 sixteenths. Almost need my glasses. Now, I have my bits marked because I typically use the same size uh, section for most of these fountain pens, so I already have a little mark on it. But let's look at our notes. We are going to go 13 and a half millimeters in. So you could set your tool at 13 and a half. Measure your drill bit and mark it. We're gonna go right there. And I would say just, you know, err on the side of less because if you go too far, and you end up with your hole being too deep for whatever reason. Um, you can't get that material back, but you can always go in further. My line was a little further than 13 and a half, so I stopped. All right, so that's my 13. I'm gonna switch now to the third size. That is a 2164. Not sure. I don't have the right glasses on to see it. And for this one, we're only going 
two and a half millimeters deep. So let's see, do I have a mark? I do not. Two and a half millimeters is not much. However, you really need to make sure you get it because you need it for that clearance. Now, make sure when you're measuring on these drill bits, you're not measuring to the tip because even though it's got that little bit of a cone in the drill bit, you need it from the start of the flat because you need your hole that depth. So, there we go. And lastly, our three eighths. And this is just that very, very outer rim of the nib. So in looking at the nib, that little tiny line on the outside we just want that to sit down in there. Now, that being said, if you want yours to sit on top and have that lip be on the top of the section, you can do that. You wouldn't cut this one, you might cut your other one a little bit different. So you can tailor this to how you want, but for this lesson, so to speak, we're gonna do it this way. All right. And we're just cutting a millimeter and a half and we should be good. So that was our four drill bits and we're hopefully have stepped down the inside of this section to match the outside of the housing of the nib. Now we're going to put this down. We're going to grab our niche setup one more time with the tap holder and the tap for the specific nib that we're using. We're using a Yova 6. J-O-W-A, it's a German nib. Um, there's different sizes. The six is probably the most popular from what I would gather. Um, it's definitely the most popular among custom makers from what I can tell. Uh, but there are other sizes out there, both smaller and larger. So you do have options. But let's grab the tap holder and the niche system and get that set up. Okay, so I've got my die holder on here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the die real quick. That way after I can clean it, now I'll pull the die holder. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the smaller tap holder. And I wanna get that tap for the nib. Now this is a very specific size. Let me put my glasses on here. This is a M7.4 by 0.5. So if you can see, these are some super fine threads. I mean, when I touch it, it just feels like a little tiny bumpy, but they are, they are super fine. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in and you just simply tighten it up kind of like a drill bit and then you're ready to go. Now I do like to try to make sure my tap is clean even though it's not very clean uh, before I do this. I do like to lube these cause they're so fine. So I'll spray a little bit, oh, sorry Amy, a little there and a little inside. And then I'm gonna do this I'm gonna bring it up and slide it in the hole. Remember the hole's bigger until we get to the back. So I'm just gonna do that close and then I'm gonna push it up by hand and there I am, right? You can see it move right there. That's where I hit the back. Now I am gonna turn this with the machine off and I'm just gonna rotate it by hand. Same thing, I'm applying pressure inward while I'm rotating and I just wanna spin a full spin or so, back it up. And I don't have to worry, I mean I could, I could stop because you know the, the threads on this nib are not very long, but it doesn't hurt me to go a little extra and make sure I'm clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this a couple times, back it up, and then unthread it. Wanna make sure I have plenty of room to clear my threads. And it's kinda cool once it gets to the end, I mean, you can see it unthreading and then it just slides loose and we are good. So, ideally you would blow this out with some air. But I don't have a compressor out here right now. So, try to get everything out you can before you test fit it. And the moment of truth, we slide that in. And then, we're threading in. Actually, we're stuck. 
it looks like my outer rim is not cut deep enough. You can see it's stopping right here. So I need to grab my, huh, I guess I didn't get that cut. I need to grab my number, my third bit, which is my 2164, and I need to drill a little deeper because I am stopped and not getting past that lip. But that's actually kind of a good thing because if I was too far in, I would create sloppiness. So somehow I messed up there and didn't get that, but let's fix that real quick. That's an easy one. Throw the chuck in, grab my bit for that size. And sometimes little weird things happen, even though I feel like I drilled it properly. Apparently I didn't. Well, maybe it's a little out of whack or something. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it definitely cut some material. Let's see if we got it now. Oh, there we go. And we're threaded in. So we are in there. And it's threaded in. You can unthread it. And it looks good. Now, it's nice to clean these parts when you're done, even though we still have to turn them and all, because when we go to turn these parts, uh, we're going to be putting these on mandrels, and we want all these threads, internal and external, clean. So obviously, we can't test fit this in the cap because it's not shaped yet. but. Uh, we can test fit it in the body, we can test fit the nib, and everything looks fine. But we want to clean these, so I'm going to put these in the ultrasonic cleaner. And it's going to do two things. One, it's going to get all the uh, WD-40 and other oils that we've used on it. But two, it's going to really vibrate any little dust particles that's down in these, in the threads, in the body, in the cap, whatever. And you'll kind of see stuff just kind of pours out. So let's clean these. And then after that, in our next video, we're going to shape everything and do a polish. And then we will have a completed fountain pen. So let's give these a clean. And then we'll see you in the next one. Okay, so this is just a very simple uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I've had this thing for years. It's just got water in it now, so you can see it kind of working. But I do like to put simple green or some very mild cleaner in it, nothing too harsh. I like to clean them, put them out to dry, and just let them dry or blow them off with the air. So what you do is just turn it on, hit the ultrasonic, and what you'll see is the WD-40 will kind of look like white coming off of there. And then you'll start to see little chunks coming out of your parts, and it's basically like the, the dust from working. And it really does a great job of cleaning. All right, I hope you like this video of making the section. This is part three. If you haven't watched part one or two, go check those out. And then be sure and tune into our next video where we do all the shaping and finishing and we complete this fountain. Thanks for watching.